just marry it into that family. Just by marrying the son of a bitch, you got a car, a house, you don't have to work anymore. You got all that for nothing. Is that right? When you went to the university, did you pay for it or your dad? Well, my, my dad paid for it. I said, then you got that for nothing. Just by being born to the right father. But you don't want anybody else to get anything for nothing. You people that were born in America, inherit the railways, they're all here. Automobiles are here. You didn't make the telephone. Just being born here, you got all that for nothing. You know, in my day, we had covered wagons. We didn't have all the highways and all the things that are available. So I'm saying that we get a lot for nothing just being born here. If you were born in India, sea you know, you'd be crawling in the muck. You understand? So getting things for nothing is not bad. It doesn't hurt anybody. And these people get up at a giant corporation over there and say, well, all oh, you people want things for nothing. They say, when you die, are you going to leave your money to research or to your son and daughter? What the hell have they done for? You see what I mean? So being born to very wealthy parents gives you a lot for nothing. Now, just being born, you get for nothing. You understand? Mothers sometimes talk as though they engineer the child. They shake the head and I gave it light and it blew the breath. They do nothing. They just walk around and plunk out it comes. Whether you want it or not. <laughs> Some guy has an orgasm. You know, he's fucking, he has a brilliant time, and then pretty soon the guy says, You're going to have a baby. He's, Well, you're my son. Like he made it. He went in the shop and he sought out the eyes and he moaned it. And he's then not a god. Even if he farted and belched and didn't want the kid, it would come along anyway. So parents do nothing unless they work on the kids, unless they try to make you self-sufficient and show you that they have problems, that sometimes they're wrong, sometimes they don't understand things. When parents talk like that, they're terrific. And they're sure I've got problems occasionally. I don't know how to handle it. When a kid comes over and says, are you the smartest daddy in the world? You say, oh, look, I can tell you how far the moon is, how long it takes to get there. I don't know where the hell I put my eye masks. See? Now you say the same thing. Was Einstein very smart? He can tell you how much the planets would vary in their orbit in 10,000 years. But he never knew where his time was. Couldn't find it. Looked all, all day long for it. And one day he had to lecture at one of the universities. And he put on some baggy pants. And I said, you can't go and lecture with those pants. He said, what's the matter with them? They're clean. He said, there's no crease in them. And I said, what's the crease for? What's that? What's it for? As long as you're wearing clean pants. Some asshole went down a crease. No, and we won't go out without that. <laughs> How can you go out without your hair done up a certain way? So I'm just telling you, people are brought up to be stupid. Let's see. Other interesting thing about Einstein, he had an ordinary looking house near Princeton, New Jersey, and the goddamn hedges were growing all over the place. And when he first moved in, the neighbors were in there. They didn't know what. Well, goddamn guy won't cut his hedges, and the grass is wild, and all that sort of thing. And they all got mad until they found out Einstein. Then they dry their own. See those hedges? That's Einstein. Yeah. In other words, if Rockefeller or Howard Hughes, who has a torn, dirty shirt, farts and belches, they say he's a millionaire, he's eccentric. If you do it, you're a goddamn bum. You understand? So these people up there that you admire are not much better than anybody else. And the kind of things you believe in, most of you are wrong. That's why you're in trouble. And if you learn how to think about the world in this way, in this sense, that people are the products of their environment. You can raise a dog full of hate or love. You can raise children so they love people. But don't blame anyone for anything. There'll be no prisons in the world we talk about. There'll be no hatred, no jealousy. And I'll show you what love is. If you're my wife and I'm in love with you, and you want to run off with a milkman, I help you back. You know, is that what you really want? I help you back. You goddamn two-time and son of a bitch. You know, I'll get a drink. I want to get a drink. There's no problem, Tony. We get pissed off. Because if you want the milk, it means that you don't want to relate to me. It must mean that, right? Now, when you go off with the milkman, if I love you, I will help you pack. Can you understand that? And I said, well, honey, why don't you take the tape recorder? You've always liked that, too. You see what I mean? No, no, you try to do that. And you say, well, what are you doing with all these things? Well, because I love you. That's what love is. The other kind of shit. You two-time and cunt. And a normal person gets so fucking uptight that they go into a person and they go, they knock smiling, they don't feel anything anymore. And a drunk, a terrific guy, he comes in and he says, Move your ass to his wife. Move on. He can never say it sober. What the fuck is it? And he gets temporary relief. Let me tell you, if that guy that's so uptight didn't drink, he'd crash mentally. You know what I mean? 
So he goes to AA. Everybody gets up and confesses. I lost my home, I lost my car, and I lost my job. And I stopped drinking now. I've been sober two weeks. Another guy gets up. I lost my family. You get a bullshit, same old thing. And the only thing they have in AA is just a lot of people standing around with the same story. And they forgive each other. Normal people don't forgive. When a guy says, I'm through drinking, I've had it. I lost my home, I'm going to be sober. And it takes him in the house. Three days later, he's lying in bed, dead drunk. I said, I thought you said you were going to be sober. He doesn't understand that circumstances put the guy in the drinking position, see? So what we want to do is get people to understand that when you get uptight, this isn't true, I'm saying. You've got to have five drinks. You've got to soften some up. This guy never drinks. When he gets uptight, he gets ticked. <laughs> and when she gets uptight, she don't drink and she don't get ticked. A guy. That's you know what I mean? When you get uptight, my drink. <laughs> so everybody manifests in a different way. See? So we're all fucked up. That's going to turn thing. But stop looking for the great thing, this wonderful person that's going to lead you through life. The only thing you can have is what you can give in a relationship. And the way things work out is always perfectly right. Meaning, here's what it means. It means that lions might jump on a zebra and eat it, and under those conditions, that's what they do. Now, in our lousy school books, they tell us that those are wild animals, and that's match nature. That's the way instinct is. That's a lie. How many of you saw the movie Born Free? Can you raise your hand? A family raised a lion, and it wouldn't bite or hurt anybody. Remember that? Then they turned it loose, and a wild boar ran in. Bam! The lion ran away and wouldn't fight. There are no natural enemies. If you can bring up a deer, a lion, a bear together, if you feed them together, they don't fight with each other. But if you feed one dog, if you've got two dogs, and you feed one dog, ah, the other one gets angry. Jealousy is made by man. If I have two children, two little boys, or a boy and a little girl, and I pick up the little girl and says, you're the angel of the family. Can you pick me up? I said, no, you're the older boy, you go out and play. Once I pick up the little girl and says, isn't she the pretty one? When the relatives come in, that makes jealousy in that way. So whenever you have a kid, put the little boy on your lap and take the little girl on your lap and say, this is your little sister, you don't take care of it. Pick them both up. Never in the classroom say, you come to the head of the class, you've done very well, and you're the dummy. Once you do that, then the rest of the class laugh, he becomes antisocial, angry, you understand what I mean? We make people what they are. They are not naturally any way any more than animals are. Now one day they did a fantastic experiment. This is the conclusion. They took a, a deer, a wolf, a rabbit, everything, put them all in the same area. But the guy put a little high voltage unit on the rabbit. The rabbit came in for the first time. And the wolf went toward the rabbit, saw a sniff, and got a shot, jumped right out of the rabbit. So it didn't affect the rabbit. Then the coyote came and sniffed and got a shot. The lion came by a shot. Then they took the jacket off the rabbit. And all that little rabbit, a white wolf, walked through there, and everything had run away from the lion. You understand that? <laughs> There are no national enemies, there are no murderers, there are no bad people. They're just terrible circumstances. And there's one passage in the Bible that very few people understand, which is useful. There but for the grace of God go I. Now here's what it means. The circumstances that put you in that situation could have put me in that situation had that situation occurred. The same kind of circumstances. That's what it means. And these assholes keep reading that Bible and know what the hell they're reading. They don't understand it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that modern scientific approach, this kind of thing that I'm talking about, gives you a realistic picture of people. It's what you get from people, it's what they can get. That's the way they are. And if you can live with it, you live with it. If you can't live with it, don't call them names. If somebody hurts you in a bad way, you tell them that that kind of situation is painful to me in the way I was brought up. See? You tell them. And if they don't seem to respond, then you can't relate to them. You have to leave them. If you can't relate to people, you leave them. Don't call them a motherfucking son of a bitch and no good shit. You know, don't do that. Just leave them if you can't relate to them. And try to be pleasant to most people. Even though you don't honestly agree with them, try to point out things that they don't understand. And you can take all kinds of people and change them without hurting them, without pain. You can raise children never to fight, never to hurt each other, without hanging signs on the wall. Do good, do right. You don't need any of that. And someday, the schools, all these schools, every one of you will be closed out. Their methods are old, they're damaging, they don't work.